Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development. Today I'm going to walk you through our new automated testing module for NetSuite. And just for the record, I'm recording this demo in October 2023 using version 1.0.1 of the automated testing module. Now let me be clear from the start on what this is and what it isn't. This is not a unit testing module for developing code. What this module enables you to do is to create a set of test cases in NetSuite and then run automated tests against those test cases to detect when something changes. So a simple example would be sales order creation. You can define a test case that specifies the details of how an order should be created and what exactly the resulting outcome should be and then have that test run over and over again. You can even have the test cases delete the resulting sales orders afterwards to avoid cluttering up your system. So when is doing this sort of automated testing most helpful? There are many reasons, but the biggest two, in my opinion, are these. First, I think it is impossible to overemphasize the tremendous value of having your standard business processes defined in test cases. This comes in handy in three ways. First, just with everyday NetSuite usage, one thing we can always rely on, both in life and in NetSuite, is that change is constant. Little things are always changing in NetSuite, and if you have automated tests being run and recorded against non-changing business processes, it will become very clear when the outcome of your process changes. In other words, you can see immediately in your failed test notifications that something has changed. On top of that, as we all know, NetSuite does two major new releases every year. With each new release, they give you a release preview account for free, specifically so that you can go in and test all your processes with the new version of NetSuite before it goes live. Now, to be honest, in my 14 years of using NetSuite, I've never seen anybody do this truly effectively. But if you have test cases defined for your processes, then when your release preview switches on, all this will happen for you automatically. It'll save you so many hours of work. And finally, if you have a sandbox account where new features are being developed, having your processes defined there can be very helpful as well. Because oftentimes the challenge is that in sandbox, nobody is really using NetSuite day to day for the normal stuff. So nobody knows when a new development breaks something existing. The second big argument here for using automated testing is that it enables test driven development. If you are involved in NetSuite development, how many times has someone given you requirements without specifying what the desired outcome should be? With this tool, you can sit down with your stakeholders and clearly define the test cases together to make sure you're on the same page on the expected inputs and outputs. So enough talk, let's get into NetSuite and I'll walk through some examples. So just to set the stage here, I already have the automated testing module installed in this account. I'm going to walk you through a few examples here, and then at the end, I'll walk you through how to install it in your own account. Okay, so there are two record lists that come with this module, test cases and test results. Let's look at test cases first. Here I have about 10 test cases for my most important business processes. It's everything from creating cash sales and sales orders to fulfilling orders, invoicing, sending SMS messages, creating POs, and creating customers. Let's look at the first one here for creating a cash sale and testing a credit card payment. This is a nice simple example of a test case. Here's the test type. It's create record. You can also do edit record, copy record, or integration tests. For records, you select a record type. You've got the full list of record types here. When you select one, we auto set the script ID for that record, in this case, just cache sale. The identifier would be the record ID, and since we're creating a record, there is no record ID that we're operating on. And now, unless you're just creating a blank record, you probably want to define some input for your test case. The test input is how you tell it what fields to set on the record. The test input is JavaScript object notation, JSON format, and if you want to understand the format, just look at the documentation PDF. So if we type in HITC auto in the global search, the PDF should come right up. I'm just going to show you so we can be on the same page. So in this PDF, we describe the format required for all these fields. 
You also have the format here in the field help, but we kind of lose some of the formatting here, so it probably is easier to look at it in the documentation PDF. If you've done any sweet scripting, the terms in this format will be very familiar to you. What this input says is that we're creating a cache sale from customer ID 77. We're using the default values parameter to specify which custom transaction form should be used. Then we're setting the location, the memo, and the card three digit code. Then we're adding quantity two of item ID 1269 and quantity three of item 532. And now I know everyone is not an expert in JSON format, so we have some helpful UI features here to guide you. So for example, if you make a mistake and type in an invalid character, you'll get a message letting you know that your JSON is not valid. Or if you try to include something here that isn't one of our expected values, files here is not expected, so it'll tell you what the valid keys are. Now let's look at the expected result field. If, as part of your test, you want to validate more than just the successful saving of the record, this is how you can do it. You can use this field to validate that fields on the resulting record have certain values, that certain line items exist, or even that you get a certain expected error message. Again, the JSON for this field is very similar to the other one. We have it documented here on page five of the PDF. So here in my test case, this says that the location of the record should be ID two, and the quantity on line index one should be three. And just to note, the line index is zero based, so the first line is line zero, the second line is line one. Finally, we have the post test actions down here. Currently, this lets you do one of two things. You can submit a field value to the resulting record, and that's what I'm doing here because I want my cash sale to go into the undeposited funds account, which is kind of a strange field in NetSuite. The other thing you can do here is tell it to delete the resulting record. You can do that using delete test record. And you may want to do that if you want the test to be repeatable, such as for fulfilling a certain sales order or creating an invoice. You can have the record deleted so that you can more easily run the test over and over again. Okay, so let's use this test case and run some test results. I'm gonna click cancel to get out of editing. Let's just view the record. First of all, let's just look at this test results tab that I have here. As you can see, it looks like this test runs daily at 8.30 and there's been a few manual runs as well here. So if we wanna run this test case now, I can just click the run test button when we do, we'll get a little dialog box letting us know that the page is going to refresh when it's complete. Some tests obviously take longer than others. Creating a cash sale in this account, I know, takes a good 10 or 15 seconds. Okay, so the screen refreshed and there's my latest test result. Now let's make a change here on the test case and make this more interesting. If I change my expected quantity to be 4 instead of 3, we should see this test case fail. And I'll mention that thankfully the system notes do a pretty good job at keeping track of when these things change. So we can see that my value changed from three to four here in case I need to track that. Let's do run test. Of course, it usually runs quicker the second time. So here we go. Now I got a failed test result. It says the value mismatch on a sublist item field quantity. The expected value is four and the actual quantity was three. So that is great, that's exactly what we would expect to happen. Now I'm just going to change this back to 3 so that it no longer fails. Now I want to show you one other test case that is set to delete the resulting record after the test is finished. This test is for fulfilling a sales order. And look, this test case has actually been failing because I was testing it and I set delete test record to false which means that the sales order is fulfilled and we obviously can't fulfill it again. So let's resolve this. I'm going to go to that sales order and I'm going to delete the fulfillment. Okay, now it's deleted. So now on my test case, I'm going to say delete test record is true. Now let's run this test. All right, well, look at that. This is actually a real life 
scenario where something did change in my NetSuite account and now I got an error. I was working on a new item fulfillment script and apparently I did something wrong here with a search filter. Um, so I will fix that another time. I got an error email about it. So for now I'm just going to undeploy that script so I can test without it and then we'll try this again. Okay, that's undeployed so let's run this test again. All right, there we go. So the test passed and it successfully created the item fulfillment. But if I check back on my sales order, sales order is still pending fulfillment, which is what we would expect because the test script deleted the test result after it was created. So that's perfect. Okay, let's look at one more example. This is an example of an integration test. Here you can see the format is just a bit different. The test type is integration. The target is the HTTP action we're taking, so it's going to be like get, post, delete, or put. The identifier is the URL we're calling. In this case, it's, it's a suite later NetSuite. The test input includes the body of the request and the headers. So to send an SMS using the Head in the Cloud SMS module, all we have to do is send a message body and a recipient to our suitelet. And we see here the expected result is a response code 200 and the response message success. So let's run this test. If this works correctly, I should receive an SMS here on my phone. And yep, there it is. So that's how test cases are set up. Now let's look at visibility over ongoing test results. So as you go about your day-to-day -day business, how are you going to know when tests start failing? Well, here on my home dashboard, I have two objects that come as part of this module. First, here at the top of my reminders is one that shows failed test results. This one is set to show test failures from just the last couple of days by default. So here we see the ones from my fulfillment test and the one where my quantity mismatched on my cash sale. Let me refresh that. So that's a clear indicator that three tests have failed recently. The second thing I have on my dashboard here is a simple list of recent test results. Successful tests show in green, and failed ones show in red. So with this, any time I look at my dashboard, I can immediately see how my test cases are doing. And of course, you could easily take this a step further and enable email notifications on either of these saved searches, just by taking the one we provide and doing a save as on it. And that's really about it for now, so now let me show you how you can install this module on your own NetSuite account and use it as a 30-day free trial. So here's a different NetSuite account where I don't have the bundle installed yet. To find it, just go to Customization, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles. Just type in Head in the Cloud Auto. Your list should be shorter than mine, but the one we're looking for is 499008 here. So if we click on this, click Install, accept the user agreement, click Install again on the preview. And this usually takes a couple of minutes. We can monitor the progress here in the list of our bundles. Alright, so when it's finished installing, we should have our new records here. Here they are, so let's go to our test cases. And here we'll create a new test case. And of course, then let's go to our home dashboard, and here we can add in the two custom objects we talked about before. So if I set up my reminders, I can add in my failed test cases reminder and we can add in my custom list my recent test results list here. So now to wrap things up, let me first say that we're obviously nowhere near finished developing this module. In other words, this really is just version 1, so please keep an open mind and send us lots of feedback on how we can improve this tool. I know we can take this a lot farther and make this more powerful, more flexible, and maybe even simpler along the way. In the meantime, if you are interested in purchasing this module, please reach out to us at gurus at headinthecloud.dev.com or via our website at www.headinthecloud.dev.com. Otherwise, thank you for watching. We'll see you at Sweet World. Bye for now.